Hello and welcome to our Fox 29 special Latinidad in Philadelphia. I'm Jason Martinez. Hispanic Heritage Month allows the opportunity to recognize communities making a difference and improving lives. For the next 30 minutes, we'll look at people and organizations working every day to further this year's theme of Esperanza, hope. Hispanic Heritage Month is the annual national opportunity to celebrate all aspects of the community, culture, power base, and overall experience. I feel that it's uh, every person's story is important. You know, when we think about um, our stories and the lessons that we've learned or part of our history or understanding where we're coming from, the land that we are in, you know, all of these stories carry light. From the often acknowledged examples of food, arts, and culture. Many years ago, I introduced uh, Latin cuisine to the city of Philadelphia. We have a lot to offer. Uh, from Bahia Puerto Ricana to Esperanza to um, you know other organizations in the area. There's, there's so many and there's so many ensembles, musicians, groups, people performing all the time and it's just a really rich community. To the too often overlooked contributions in business, politics, and medicine. What we're seeing is that Latinos are taking their own power and utilizing our own resources and our own voices and our own platforms to get information out to mobilize our community. During the pandemic, we went and we fought to get a, um, a vaccination site. This community has 70% of its Hispanic people vaccinated. We're the number one Hispanic vaccinated community in the United States. The Latino, Latina, or Latinx communities, depending on your preferred label, are growing, contributing, and deserving of recognition for our daily contributions. So join us as we continue the celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month and being Latinidad in Philadelphia. As we mentioned, this year's theme is Esperanza, so it's only fitting to begin with an organization of the same name. Our Marcus Espinoza has a look at the organization that's been empowering our communities for more than 30 years. We have great cultures, we have great foods, we have great arts. Everything that America offers and then everything that our home countries offer, we can have right here. Reverend Luis Cortez is the founder and CEO of Esperanza, which lies in the heart of East Hunting Park. He's a well-known advocate for the Latinx community and has built a state-of-the-art facility to showcase the many talents of the Hispanic culture. Esperanza wants to create Hispanic-owned and operated institutions to serve our community. One of those institutions is called AMLA, an organization that seeks to promote the development, dissemination, and understanding of Latin music and culture throughout Philadelphia. Danielle De Jesus is the director of that school. He originally started through Esperanza as a student himself. De Jesus says Philadelphia is a treasure trove of artistic expression and opportunity, and a place like Esperanza and Alma help cultivate that. I feel really lucky to have been able to grow up in a place where I never felt like I had to leave to find my space. You know, I'm an artist and I never felt that I had to go to another city. The Latino community is a very rich community when it comes to the arts. We have a lot to offer from Talla Puerto Riqueño to Esperanza to other organizations in the area. There's, there's so many and there's so many ensembles, musicians, groups, people performing all the time. And it's just a really rich community to be a part of. This past year, the city of Philadelphia cut its arts budget to nearly 2.5 million, which is below pre-pandemic levels. It's one of many challenges for the arts community. It's something you guys always got to fight for, right? Like it's funding constant. And <laughs> funding funding, and, and looking for that funding is constant, and you have to be really creative. And so um, everything has to be, uh, to, like, you know, a, a well-rounded kind of program. And it's not just students and local artists that are on display here at Esperanza for Luis. It's about bringing grade A performing groups to the Hispanic community. So in this neighborhood, the Philadelphia Orchestra comes in place. In this neighborhood, the Pennsylvania Ballet, now the Philadelphia Ballet, comes and dances. Not only do they come and dance here, but they dance with our young people. They work in a couple of our schools with young people. They perform in our teatro, and a parent, a mom, can come, bring her three, two or three kids, see the Philadelphia Ballet, their A group, spend $10. Why? 65 over and over, older free, 18 and under 
free. So mom can spend an hour and a half in the neighborhood where it's easier for her to get to. The orchestra, the uh, Philodanko, they come to her in her community and they do dances and music out of our traditions. Reverend Cortez also wants to remind everyone that identifying as part of the Hispanic culture can be so many different things to so many different people. So the word Hispanic covers 26 nationalities and in each one of these nationalities you have different races. We have the African race, we have the European race, and the indigenous people's race. So if you do that multiplication, there's 75 options right there, right? Then you could also break it up by a class structure. So it is a very dynamic uh, culture. Within the halls of Esperanza, several buildings and locations reside a home for the Hispanic community within Philly. And not just a home, but a place to invite others in the world to see a chance to bridge gaps, inspire others, and overcome ignorant stereotypes. We want to share the joy of being in Philadelphia. We think that our community can be part of the fabric of the city in a stronger way. Um, and that will be up to the different corporations and to the political structure. It's my hope that we join together and work toward a, a better understanding of each other and more importantly, how we can help each other grow economically. The food, arts, and culture of the Latino community is well known, but what about the growing economic and political impact? That's next. Esperanza, or hope, comes in many forms, and Bill Anderson introduces us to some who work daily to create their own through economic strength and political empowerment. This is really a time to reflect not only on the future, but to reflect on what the Latino community for generations has given to Philadelphia. Hispanic Heritage Month is about the celebration of people within the community making a difference. Arts, culture, food are all important, but sometimes in the midst of the celebration, it's easy to forget just how significant the growing community also is in areas like politics and business. We're approaching 20% of the population, so close to one in five people across the country nationally are Latino. Latinos are the most entrepreneurial demographic in the country. Jennifer Rodriguez heads the local Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and Rafael Collazo leads a national Latino political action fund. They focus on different areas, but the same basic goal, respect the impact of the communities they represent. So we're gonna to continue to see uh, this emerging Latino community and this new generation of leaders organize themselves and, you know, uh, put, bring their own seat to the table. We want to show that we participate at every level of the economy. With so much division and discussion about politics over the last several years, the diverse communities Rafael works with are working hard to organize and realize the ability to increasingly make real change. In 2020, we had 50, over 50 million Latinos come out to vote, which was incredibly significant, about one in 10 of all voters um, throughout the country. Um, but there's still another 15 million or so that either are registered and didn't turn out to vote. And if the trend continues? There's a significant voting block already and a, a much larger one and a real game-changing one uh, potentially as we continue to organize. And the potential is very similarly game-changing in the business community. On the national level, there are five million Latino-owned businesses. That is greater than most economies in the world. It's immense and so much more diverse than many realize. Well, you know, you think about Latino community and you think about undocumented immigrants, right? Because the press is so fascinated with it. Um, you know, you think about landscapers, you think about cooks and people in the kitchen. And the reality is that Latinos are in all sectors of the economy. It's something to think about as we continue the celebration and realize that the things we focus on this month are changing our society every month. Successful Hispanic entrepreneurs are all around us here in Philly. I met two of them who come from different countries, different generations, but both epitomize the values of hard work and determination. Behind the iconic Greek restaurant South Street Souvlaki is the story of a Mexican-born man turned Philadelphia entrepreneur. When I come from, from Mexico, I don't have no job in Mexico. No job. 
I don't have nothing. It was 1996 when a 22-year-old Ismael Mercado immigrated to the United States and got a job here as a dishwasher. Today, he's the owner of this place. It's a combination American dream and Mexican dream. Mexican dream. The original owner of 40 plus years, Tom Vasiliadis, saw something in Ismael. He could have sold to anyone for top dollar, but he wanted to keep it in the family. A lot of people got more lot of money, can buy the place right away. You know, I know that. But here's the, here's the nice, he gave the opportunity to buy this place. Thank you. It was a change in ownership longtime customers say was seamless. Still the same quality, still the same care, still the same love, and their food is outstanding. Ismail's story is one of hard work and sacrifice because all these years, Ismail's children have been in Mexico. He put them through private school with money he earned here. And my kids now, my daughter is the doctor, and my son is the architect in Mexico. Across town in Kensington, a young Hispanic entrepreneur is building a small empire, one hot sauce bottle at a time. Because it's hot sauce, and it's hot, and it's fire, fire. Dominican-born Roddy Fernandez sacrifices sleep for his dream. Roddy works two other jobs to support his wife and children. He grows, mixes, bottles, and ships Faya, his vegan hot sauce, right here in Philly. I've shipped as far as Thailand, Japan, the Dominican Republic, and everywhere in the country. Uh, almost 30 states by now. This is my little garden. With zero cooking or gardening experience, Roddy started growing peppers as a pandemic hobby, including the Carolina Reaper, which is featured in his hottest hot sauce, La Muerte. I started making hot sauces and I put it on Facebook and told my friends, hey, I'm making hot sauce again like the one I made last year. If anyone wants it, just hit me up. And people bought it. They sold out. I made 24 bottles, and they sold out in less than an hour. Now he sells about 700 bottles a week and counting. I guess you could say I'm starting to live the American dream when it comes to having not being born in this country and coming over and actually starting something for myself and create a job. I started this whole business with like $300. Is this the hottest pepper known to man? Uh, so far, yes. Uh, world record again is certified. I can't come here, talk about your incredible hot sauce, and not try it. That's the chip's already on fire. Here we go. That's really good. Thank you. And it's still built. My mouth is now on fire. <laughs> or, I mean, sorry. On fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably heard about the restaurant Cuba Libre, but Good Day Philadelphia's Shayna Ferreira shows us that there's so much more going on, keeping with the Esperanza theme, than just great food. Like many Hispanic-owned restaurants, Cuba Libre has become a Philadelphia staple with Latin Caribbean flair. For head chef Guillermo Pernot, it's a source of pride. As an Argentinian-born chef married to his Cuban wife of over 30 years, Hispanic food for him is a melting pot, much like the country he now calls home. It's, it is an honor for me to be able to show a little bit of the talent that I have or the, my contribution to the food. I'm very flattered to, to be Hispanic and I'm very flattered to represent uh, the Argentinian and the Cuban culture. Celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month for Chef Pernot is personal, and sharing his beloved culture with the world is his American dream. Inside the walls of his old city restaurant, you're made to feel like you're right in Havana, from the art to the decor and, of course, the food. La comida, food, being a central part of the celebration for the culture, la cultura. But it also means giving back, and for Chef Guillermo, his food has major impact abroad, and you support it by simply enjoying a meal or even a mojito at Cuba Libre. This one is called Esperanza. It translates to hope in English, something Chef Guillermo says is a central word for Cuba today. We donate part of those proceeds to Cuba Decide, uh, Cuba Decide, which is an organization that uh, amplifies the struggle of the Cuban people today. Cuba today, a nation plagued by over 60 years of socialist rule, has been the backdrop of recent uprising against its government, leaving many both on the island and in the states continuing the cry for democracy and basic human rights. For Chef Bernot, taking his proceeds to the homeland of the food he serves is a personal mission. Right now, it's a struggle in Cuba 
with medicine, economically and food, and people still looking for the liberty and the, the, the democracy. And so we try to, uh, to do the best we can. We just donated 7, 000, over $7,000 to Cuba de Cide, or Cuba Decide, for, uh, to help them uh, achieve their goals. The bigger picture is this. When you support a Hispanic-owned restaurant, you support so much more than the business. Every time you put a dollar in, in a restaurant, you definitely help a huge uh, gamma of people. Not just the, the employee in directly, but also their family, either in the United States, in another city, or abroad. Sharing Hispanic culture while being part of a greater purpose, and it's all being done right here in our own backyard, in the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. Art is often the voice of the Latino and many other communities. Next, you'll meet artist Michelle Ortiz as she explains using her talents to give voice to the issues most impacting our communities. Artist Michelle Ortiz believes that all voices have a story to tell. Some just never get the chance. So she uses her talents to make sure as many people as possible are represented through her various forms of art. I define what I do is really transforming public spaces to reflect the stories of communities. As we continue to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, we're also highlighting some of the people who are working every day in Latinx communities to improve people's lives. People like visual artist Michelle Angela Ortiz. When I think about my art, it's really making that connection and opening space for dialogue that um, allows us to hear each other. Look around the city and now the country and you can find Michelle's work from public murals to one day art installations to short form videos. The art itself is impressive and nationally in demand, but Michelle has much larger goals. It's how can I utilize my art to um, have people just take a moment to actually listen. And, and to reflect, and that gives space for dialogue, which I think is also very much needed in the world that we are in right now. So you'll see art addressing immigration, economic, and social justice issues, all in an attempt to help people understand that as divided as society may seem at times, progress comes from unity and empathy. To be able to present these stories is really uh, making those connections that can then spark people to take action. Michelle made it clear that Hispanic Heritage Month is a positive jumping off point, but we need to be open to looking deeper. What people fail to see is just our multiple identities and, um, and how our traditions and our culture are very com complex. The stories also include professional success, families that need to be supported and respected, a growing political base, and so many people like Michelle using their talents to give voice to others. We can begin to celebrate them in Hispanic Heritage Month, but that's clearly just the beginning. We are much more than a month. We have so much to offer and have offered to what is, you know, what we call Philadelphia, our home. As a proud member of our Hispanic community, it's my sincere hope that the last 30 minutes have given you just a taste of the significance of Hispanic Heritage Month and the communities this month represents. But rest assured, this is just the beginning. We'll keep telling these stories here in the days and months to come here at Fox 29. I'm Jason Martinez. Thanks for watching.